Welcome from the Ministry of Agriculture, the agricultural entomologist. His name is Rishi Mohan Singh. And uh, let me say good morning. Thank you for being here bright and early, Rishi. And uh, I look forward to our discussion concerning the giant African snail management this morning. Welcome. Hi, good morning. Firstly, before we even get into the giant African snail, for those hearing about your, your, uh, your title, uh, your role and function, uh, what's, what's uh, entomologist for those who, who are hearing about that for the very first time? Right, so an entomologist, the main function is the study of insects. That's our main role. Mm. But we also deal with other pest issues. Okay. And this giant African snail, um, obviously not, not indigenous to Trinidad, uh, brought in, I'm sure, illegally. It was. And now it's, it's causing a serious issue. Uh, walk me through the origins of this giant African snail and, and how rapid uh, its, its ability to multiply. Right. So, as you rightly said, it was illegally brought into our country. In 2008, it was recorded in Trinidad. And for 10 years, it was actually contained in the Digo Martin area, what we will consider the core area. Now, the nature of this um, pest, it likes to hitchhike. So it will hitchhike on vehicles. It will even hitchhike on plant, planting material. It lays eggs in the soil and even flooding. So all those are methods in which it moved from that core area to other areas. So right now, we can record 63 different place areas in Trinidad where we have the giant African snail. It is also reported in Tobago as of last year. Mm. Now, the thing with this snail is it's hermaphrodite, meaning it has both male and female sex organ. So once it mates once, it is fertile for its rest of its life. It can live for nine years. And this snail produces a lot of eggs, 300 to 400 eggs in a cycle, and 12, so roughly 1,200 eggs in a year, three cycles per year. So seeing one snail in a matter of a year, you will have 1,200 snails. So it multiplies very fast. And I would imagine uh, these snails must eat, and what they do, they eat on crops, they feed on, on, on vegetation? Correct. Now, this snail, it's a wild snail, an invasive alien species. It feeds on over 500 different species of plants. So that is roughly almost every plant species that we have in our country. From agriculture produced to ornamentals, it also feeds on your concrete. Now, mm. Because a lot of people, they think, okay, I do not have any plants, I live in a concrete jungle, but you would have some form of concrete, whether your walkway, your walls, and things like that. It feeds on the concrete to get the calcium. Mm. So it's not only an agriculture problem, but it is also an environmental problem. Because you will have the slime and even the droppings that will deface concrete, as well as, like I said, eats the concrete. Is it dangerous? Um, I mean, let's say somebody, you go in your backyard, you see this going through your croton, dealing with your little, your, little, your little garden. Could you hold it with your hand? What's your recommendation to, to, to approach this said snail? Put on a glove, your, your spray it, your, your hammer. What we do to, to, to deal with this? Right, and that is, we are here to clear up fake news. This snail ha is a vector for something called a rat longworm. It's a parasite. Now, this parasite lives in rats. And what happens is this snail feeds on your rat droppings it's a scavenger, so it feeds on the rat droppings, and it gets this rat longworm. Now, the thing is, according to the Ministry of Health, do not consume the snail. That's the first thing, right? Now, however, if you have, let's say, natural openings, let's say you have cuts and things like that, and the slime gets in contact with it, that rat longworm could get into your system. Hmm. Now, if it gets into your system, you do not die. We want to make that very clear, you do not die. Your symptoms will be mild fever, headache, little vomiting, and things like that. And in a matter of three or four days or so, with no medication, you recover, right? But this rattle lung womb is linked to a form of meningitis in humans. Mm. But it is not the meningitis where you get brain swelling and you will die and things like that. So as a precaution, we urge the public, do not touch the snails with your bare hands. Mm. Use plastic gloves. If you don't have gloves, put your hand in a plastic bag and do not consume the snail. Mm. Now, one thing we are um, familiar with escargot. A lot of people will see online people are consuming giant African snails. However, these snails that they are consuming are grown in a farm, like how you will grow shrimp or how you will grow salmon. Mm -hmm. It is grown in a clean environment with a particular diet. That is why they consume it. We do not grow snails here in that way. 
it is a scavenger, so more than likely it will have this rat lungworm in it. Mm. So we recommend do not consume the snail, do not touch it with your bare hands. Talk me about, talk me through um, dealing with it, you put on the glove, what's the best way to, to dispose and to, I mean the most, I guess the most uh, professional way, I mean I don't want people to, to be you know, it's still an animal too, you know, and you don't want people to, to be torturing the snail, whatever. So what's the best way you recommend? Do we drown it? Do we give it a one lash with a hammer? And more so, after the disposal of it, I want to find out if this snail in our bag for money is still very much functional and what's the management plan. So firstly, how do we get rid of the snail the best way? Right, so we have cost-effective ways of dealing with snail. For instance, if you have small populations in your, let's say your property, you can actually use salt and water, make a salt solution. So you're using a quarter cup of salt in a gallon of water, you make that solution, you collect your snails, you put them in that container, cover it and leave it for 24 hours. Snails are, are dead. If you don't want to use salt, you can actually, actually use bleach. Two cups of bleach in that same, in a gallon of water, you put your snails in there, cover it 24 hours, they are dead. Mm. So those are cost-effective things that everyone has salt at home, or you may have bleach, you can do that for small populations. However, because of how the snail multiplies, you will have hundreds, maybe thousands of it. The most effective way of dealing with it is baiting the area. So you can actually purchase 4% metaldehyde snail bait at your agro shop. And what you are doing with that, you are sprinkling it, or we say broadcast, around your property, on the borders of your property. You do not apply this bait on your crops. You do not apply it between your crops. The thing is, this bait has an attractant in it, like a scent. So when you apply that bait, wherever the snail is hiding, they will come out and feed on that bait. Now the thing is, they don't just die immediately. They feed on the bait, and in a matter of two to three days, then they will die. Mm. So when they are dead, Whatever method you choose to use, when they are dead, you collect them. You do not want to just leave them there because it will start to rot, it will give off a scent, right? Another thing uh, you can do if you have pets and kids around, you can use iron phosphate and apply it the same way that you will apply your bait. Okay. Your dead snails, you can actually burn them in a safe container, let's say a metal drum or something, when they are dead. You do not want to be lighting a live snail. It will continue to crawl, it may cause even more damage. So they must be dead, you put them in that container, you burn them. You can actually bury them as well, if you don't want to burn them. Mm. Um, dig a hole about two feet deep, so that even when they start to rot, you don't get a scent. Mm. You can also, if you don't want to do those things, once they are dead, you can put them in a garbage bag and send them in the garbage. Okay, okay. Um, people still bringing snails in bag for money? Right, so this was an initiative at the beginning of the year by the ministry, a three week period, it was a pilot project. Okay. Right, it only went for three weeks within January, February, so we are not doing that again. Okay. The idea of that was to reduce the population going into the rainy season, right? So yes, the ministry was at that time doing that program, but we no longer do that. Excellent, and as we wrap things up, what's the management plan going forward? Right, so we are in phase two of this program where we actually doing this sensitization informing people about the correct, we are giving them the correct information how to manage the snail. You need to manage the population in this rainy season, so come next year, we do not have even more snails. The thing is, a lot of people think it's an agriculture problem, like I say, but it's everybody's problem. You need to deal with the snails on your property. If everyone does that, we can reduce the population. And if you reduce the population, come next year, we will have less and less of it. You have to treat giant African snail now as if you have rats. How you deal with your rats, how you deal with ants in your property, you do the same thing for giant African snail. If you don't do it and you just leave it there, the snail is not going to leave. It is just going to continue to multiply. Like we say, it's very prolific. It lays a lot of eggs and it just continues. In a dry season, it goes through an, what we call an estivation process, which is a dormancy period. So it will still remain there. And come rainy season, it will actually um, continue to multiply. Well, Rishi, I want to thank you this morning. Uh, you were very articulate. You brought the facts this morning. Um, you know, we can't just go off everything we see on the socials. Uh, we have to listen to the experts. And most importantly, as Rishi mentioned, do not eat it, Trinidad and Tobago. You know, want something moving. We want to put it in a pot, stew it, curry it, jira it down. Leave the snail alone. Let's treat with it. 
because this year could really be problematic if it's not contained. Yeah, Rishi said it's eaten crops, it's eaten concrete, you know, rat droppings and all. It's ridiculous. Don't do yourself that Trinidad and Tobago. Rishi, feel free. Keep us uh, in the loop and you can touch base with us anytime. Yeah, and um, all this information you can get on our ministry's website as well, agriculture.gov.tt. That's right, Rishi Mohan Singh, Trinidad and Tobago, from the Ministry of Agriculture, giving us details. We take a pause, we come back and get into some of the segments where we keep you in the loop, let you know how you can come and be part of the program. Full details before we head to the 7 a.m. news updates. See you soon.